putting it in context a bit. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, the one whom Jesus raised from the dead. Because by reason of him, Lazarus that is, and his raising from the dead, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus rather than the temple and the rabbi or the priest. On the next day, much people were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. And of course, that brings in our, our palm entrance into Jerusalem, riding in on a donkey, where we get Palm Sunday. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not meaning to laugh at the rituals of... The point is, he raised Lazarus from the dead. The news of that spread like wildfire. Everybody came to Jerusalem to see this one who could raise someone from the dead. Now there are some people that say Lazarus could not have really died because that would mean that he was in violation of God's word where it says it's appointed but once for a man to die. This would mean that Lazarus would have to die two deaths. It would mean that the others whom Peter raised and Elisha and Elijah and whoever else raised anyone from the dead. It means that this couldn't be exactly what it says because of that one line of scripture. And I happen to think that, uh, yes, it's appointed in general for, one man, for a man to die but once, unless God decides to do it another way for the purpose of uh, showing forth his power and word. Amen? Okay. Why do people get into arguments about things like this? Why do people argue about um, and try to make scripture work out so they torture the logic? The worst people I ever met that did this were the serpent seed people when they took Genesis 4.1 because their whole thing collapses. If, Gen if Eve had a, if Cain was, you know, uh, Adam and Eve's son, that destroys the entire argument. They hang all of their books and all of their logic on that one verse, Genesis 4.1, which says that, uh, Eve says, I got, a little, I got a little man from the Lord. And then they start saying, but Lord in that context really means the Lord of the earth. Or, you know what, some, you know, believe me, if it came from the serpent, it would have been written, and the serpent knew Eve. And uh, while Adam was out strolling around, being cuckolded, and uh, then they, he bore a son, the serpent came into Eve, and they bore a son named Cain. Now Cain and Abel were against each other. The, the serpent's son and, and, and Abel, Adam's son, were at odds with each other. Right? No, but because the Bible was edited, you see, they got rid of all that. You see, it really, one time it said, it, it talked all about it so that it would make perfect sense. So the people, and then I find, oddly enough, that a lot of people in the serpent thing, um, you know, who, who, who want to mangle Genesis 4.1 and make it say something it doesn't say, because it did one time, but now it doesn't, or whatever the logic is, tend to really be focused on getting out of here on this rapture deal t tomorrow. Like the two kind of go hand in hand. So they're hanging that entire rapture experience on a few scriptures where uh, the, the, basically, the, to sum it up, it's Jesus, the lamb, will come for his bride and that uh, man is not um, 
you know, the, the, the righteous are, you know, in, in Revelation 7 and 14 and whatnot, the righteous will be uh, taken by the Lamb to go wherever he goes uh, and follow him wherever he goes. And because these are the first fruits, these are the ones who stayed the course. And um, this is the, uh, you know, they'll be caught up in the air. And the, the next resurrection would be when the Lord comes after the tribulation to gather up his church and set and gather up all the, that have perished and, and return with great glory to put down Babylon, to win at Armageddon, and to um, destroy and kill all the people who had, um, you know, created the problem in the first place. Uh, well, there's conflicting scriptures on that. There's one that says he'll restore the nations, and there's another one that says all the kings and queens and mighty people of the earth will be eaten by the birds. So it'll be up to you to, 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 to kind of use your imagination as to what that really means or be informed by the Holy Spirit. For me, it means uh, the, the great wrath is the great vengeance according to man's earning it through his depravity and secret societies and guilds that have destroyed this world and destroyed nations and destroyed uh, politics and destroyed everything, um, that there will be a retribution for that for, for hurting so many people based on uh, reap what you sow. And the church is unfortunately part of the secret society as well. When I say church, I mean Catholic, Protestant denominations, commercial church, wherever you find it. It doesn't mean they don't do good, and I'm sick of the argument. Um, it is what it is. It was, they will be destroyed with Babylon, period. So since it's going to be destroyed, 100% thorough, 100% true, the church today, when it, which in America you call the 501c3, will be destroyed completely. The Catholic Church will be destroyed totally, utterly, and completely by Yahweh. And all the um, perverted secret society stuff within the Vatican and within um, these people that are members of, you know, whether it be deep Masonic roots or Templars or whatever it is, bloodline elites who have been participating in this, all these religions will be outed and vetted once and for all for all the world to see. How that's going to happen, uh, I, I can only imagine that it would be supernatural, like, you know, everyone talking uh, different languages, but you're able to hear it all in one language or understand what they're saying or something on that level. Why should I care? Um, well, I'm not so much that I care one way or the other. I'm, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Um, the Babylon world, the world system, and the system of commerce that you see today will be destroyed utterly. Uh, it will not leave institutions such as education, church, um, whatever. All these institutions will be destroyed because they all were corrupted by Satan and the people that were part and parcel of them uh, lied and did not disseminate true information and deceive the people of the world and had them going the wrong way after a lie which led to their death and destruction. So there's going to be retribution for the thousands of years of atrocities that have been committed upon the people of the earth. Period! I used to think you know, hey, you're a lamb. You know, you were brought out of the world by Jesus, disconnected from the world, connected to Christ. So therefore, um, your parents and your children, let's say, or grandparents, maybe God will give them a break because of you. I'm here to tell you, no such break. Sorry. No such break exists. You have a burden for your... Yes, well, I may have a burden, but, you know, it is what it is. 
if they belong to the Lord, then, you know, and they're astray, well, then that's one thing. But if they don't and they're gone and they're twice dead, well, then they go where the twice, where do the twice dead go? Well, that's where they go. You could have a, you know, a bad seed kid, you know, who, who excels in everything, gets straight A's and goes right off into being a senator or whatever. But on the underbelly of it is, but it was all, all done by secret societies. Uh, you get my little humor here? That's true. The squeakiest, cleaniest, uh, you know, are probably the evilest. And um, I'm sorry, but they, uh, they're going to burn. Period. Anyone vetted through the secret societies who does not repent and accept the Lord's offer and then disconnects from that is, is going to go down with, you know, the whole idea of coming out of her, my people, of Babylon, out of all the systems of commerce and, you know, just all the systems that are corrupt, but primarily to the church, um, is saying... You must disconnect from the world and connect to Christ. See, that's why there's all this immediate knee-jerk reaction to uh, this guy that shot up the theater. Must be a uh, it must be a Christian conservative. They've been trying to pin this kind of thing on people from the beginning, and it's because they know deep down instinctively that the real enemy of them is Yahweh and the people of Yahweh would be the enemy and they're just going to try to frame them any way they can even if Jesus' people are people of peace and, and are not it would be more inclined to be killed rather than kill and would be inclined to follow the rules rather than break the rules and pay the taxes rather than rebel against the taxes and put up with a corrupt government you know, along with pointing out what's going on if they have prophetic gifts Rather than, you know, rather than um, fighting against it. And the reason for that is, is because these people, these peaceful people, have their eyes heavenward. And um, see this life here as a brief temporary thing, just really not worth trying to make any um, vanity plays here because... It's all fleeting, and it's not really what's permanent. And they'll tend to go to what's permanent and diminish those things that aren't permanent. I mean, that doesn't mean you don't work to make it a better place for your children and grandchildren, and sure. But it's not the primary focus, this life. And when people don't have this life as the primary focus, they're very much at peace and very much you know, wanting to see as many repent as possible because of compassion of not wanting to see them suffer. Now, I don't want to see people suffer like I've seen, you know, in the past year or two. Um, and to see the, the deeds of the evil come to full fruition in terms of uh, reaping what you've sown and then come to visit them in their old age and have it all fall apart and just, you know, all become a disaster. The devil promises reason, organization, hierarchy, uh, prediction, insurance, all those things the world promises. But the world doesn't always deliver. So the people that sow to the earth go back to the earth. In other words, they, the gods of the earth and the, the, the spiritual hierarchy of the earth claims them. The people of Yahweh are here. Uh, they are not connected to this situation, to quote the world, unquote. They are a peculiar lot, and um, they're strangers in a strange land. They're not going to be um, connected to something that's dying. It, it's just not logical. At the same time, when the connected ones try to use them as lambs to the slaughter and use them as batteries and use them to boost themselves because that's their religion, that's the way of the world. Um, you know, you won't get um, retaliation by them. 
but you would get retaliation from people who do not know the Lord. And you would get uh, also psyops going on where they try to make someone look like they're a Christian. And, you know, but, but they're evil. And they tried to do this with the abortion doctors and the shooting of the abortion doctors and all that. But it, it, there hasn't been much that they could do because, you see, primarily these people don't know the Bible and don't know the Word of God. So they don't know how it works, that you start trying to do something like that and God just scrambles it so it just doesn't come to fruition. Because there aren't really people like that who are really sold out to Christ. They're, 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 the, the people of the world have the stake in the world. They're the ones who are going to fight one way and fight the other and kill people and do all... It's the people of the world that do things like that. This guy in um, Holmes in uh, Aurora was an elite uh, on a federal grant connected to an elite Euroscience um, program and was going to be graduating uh, was before he was interrupted for whatever, however it happened. He was also known to be part of the Occupy Wall Street movement, which is very much uh, being, you couldn't, you know, this is all, you know, he had affiliations and connections to the world, as did his family. This is not a disconnected person. He may have been handled and controlled and put up to it, which is more likely. But this was an inside job. Um, Christians wouldn't be around something like that. But it doesn't stop the idea of the persecution. In other words, it doesn't stop them from trying to figure out a context that they could corral the Christians and, and, and you know, round them up. Um, I see it every day moving closer and closer legally to where they would be able to develop a context, you know, one big plank in, in, in their, for their victory on that, of what they perceive victory, because of course it's silly what they do. But um, the perceived victory is using the Bible as anti-gay, you know, as a way of developing laws that would um, silence and punish people for even having faith in Jesus. But it's, it's, you know, it's all going to be done under the color of law. Um, whereas anyone else is able to say whatever they want. But the Christian is going to be muzzled and his, his rights taken away. The, the idea that you can take a Christian's rights away would then lead to taking freedoms away from that person. And they've been working at this. Well, you can see it slowly kind of coming to this kind of persecution for, you can see it slowly moving into place. And um, where any kind of people like wa Occupy Wall Street people or whatever, throw things and break things and say blasphemies and whatever, they get a slap on the wrist. But a Christian opening a Bible in a, in a public place on a park bench and sharing the word with a couple of friends or praying in Jesus' name could possibly be arrested and not too long in the future. That, my friends, is classic one-on-one -on -one persecution. And that is what is predicted to be in the end times, the people that will not take, um, if there is a chip involved in Obamacare, and he gets another term, which I guess he would if, he, if, this, is, if this is it, that, that he would get another term, uh, then the, 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 eventually the chip business would be made known um, that it's in the bill, and that people have to take a chip for their medical information because of the health care law uh, so that they could under, you know so that they could you know better manage the, the, the services for everybody. And this would be a stealth ruse way of creating a mark of the beast through health care that would be eventually required for people to buy and sell which would fulfill Revelation 13. And then that would be presuming that Obama eventually, you know, shows himself to be the Antichrist, which would mean adoration of the world. Uh, you know, most of the world adores Obama. The, the only antipathy toward Obama is people that are not under his spell because he casts an actual, 
hypnotic spell on people and then they love him. But yeah, I see right through that. That's all a con job. And, uh, you know, that's, but it's a supernatural uh, um, ability. Uh, and uh, people say neurolinguistic programming. No, it, it, he may have been trained in that, but it's something supernatural. And the only people that won't see that are people that are sold out to the Lord. They won't see it. So eventually that news gets tighter and tighter until it's like, you people don't see Obama as, as, as solve the Earth's problems, and you're not going to take the chip, and you're not going to bow down. Um, I'm saying if this, let's say it's the last presidency, and you know we get down the road a little ways, the election wins, it becomes World War III, there's martial law, there's no more elections planned after that. He's installed as sort of the dictator of the world. He's adored by all the world because he's brought peace, people think, but really he's bringing the, this plan of, of gathering as many souls for Satan as possible. Whatever, you know, you, you, can, you can put it together. And those things haven't happened. Those things haven't happened. But you can see the theme of it happening, the kind of themes these guys trying to build him as the Messiah in the beginning, and then he sort of lost his way, and now, you know, you know then eventually he gains traction through being a, a world leader with war. And I think the Europeans, are the, um, in general, that love Obama, um, enough said I think you know I'm not going to insult the Europeans more than they've already insulted themselves they're, they're gone baby you can just write off Europe and more and more things are like that so as I see this going in the gun control it's like they weren't going to use it for gun control now the tragedy in Aurora they're, gonna, they're, they're, they're slipping stuff into the uh, Cyber Security Act bill uh, to to um, confiscate or to make illegal the sale of these um, high capacity magazines as a first step to trying to get hold of those assault rifles, which are you know, gosh, I don't know. I mean, assault. It's a semi-auto rifle. Like you know, you could have a hunting rifle with semi-auto, like a thirty odd six, and I guess that could be an assault weapon just as easily if it, you know. But they want to get the guns to hold 10 rounds and that's it. It doesn't take a genius to figure out, well, you can have, you know, 20 clips of 10 rounds and there's your high capacity. You just have to carry more, uh, more clips. And, um, you know, it's, it's all so silly, but it all, you know, the global disarmament, global communications being hooked up in the cyber realm with the chip, regulation of the Internet, Cybersecurity Act, um, you can see how it eventually leads to top-down lockdown, to eventual um, enforced hierarchy. Of, and it even gets down to those who should procreate and those who shouldn't. The state owning the children, inculcation, indoctrination on different levels, different programs for you know test tube babies, eventual hybrids, and hybrid um, legal uh, status and then superior beings through machinery, and then machines, eradication of the human genome as defective, and the plant and animal genome as defective, and the rise of the machines, sci-fi on steroids, everybody's happy, blah, 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 blah. Um, and ultimately, that's where all this leads. A lot of the sci-fi tales were really cautionary tales to show that, you know, if you extrapolate this out and say there is no big Armageddon kind of event, then eventually it gets to the point where, you know, different genetic models of humans are slotted for certain genetic work. And, you know, it, it, it fulfills the Fritz Lang nightmare as well. And... Uh, but I don't think it'll be quite, I don't think we would get that far because like I say, Yahweh, Elohim, God, you know, Jesus, Yeshua, is in control and would bring about a conflict. You know, there'd be some kind of conflict. Um, the Bible talks about the tribulation saints who are beheaded for the faith. 
They're simple, loving people who, are, who the state just beheads for the, for the faith. Um, well, that's already in the, in the tenets of Islam, but I'm just saying Islam is given a pass who vows to kill gays. Chick-fil-A is not because they're Christian. You see, the double standard shows not just their hypocrisy, but they have no intention of playing by the rule. Their, their goal is to get the Christian even though the Christian is peaceful and safe and prays blessings on people. I'm constantly praying for you know, people around me and blessings. I don't know what their status is, whether they're a believer or not, but praying for them to be protected, to be blessed. Because I, if I pray a blessing on someone, it means the Lord will speak to them. And I you know, want to see people do well. And that's, you know, and, and my feeling about people in general is, is generally positive and that most people are generally good. I don't see, mo- and when I say good, I mean, by that I mean intact, having morals, having um, a capacity to feel guilt when they do something wrong, caring about other people, wanting to help their families. You know, basic common sense good is when I say good. It doesn't mean that we are not totally depraved in our hearts given the certain conditions that we could become like an episode on Breaking Bad or something. Sure. Anyone could. But there's also this capacity for great love and great goodness. And most people are kind of like vacillate between being, you know, hiding their sins, obviously, and, and, then, and then doing good acts because they feel they should or they have a sense of duty and purpose and sense of honor and sense of respect and they respect other people um, and it doesn't become something like I'm always tempted to to condemn people when they don't think like I do it's just, it's a, just part of my fallen flesh condition I, I have to be aware of that because that's a real problem <clears throat> I, I tend to call them idiots and stupid and this and that and and I know it's wrong. I, I, I'm telling you right here, folks, I know it's wrong when I do it. But sometimes, you know what, I, it, it just means, it means for me that I'm out of Yahweh's will. I'm watching too much, uh, or listening, rather, to too much politics or something. Or, you know, I'm watching this, the microcosm of this battle going back and forth upon the earth. I see people just falling in with the devil left and right, you know, just like, like lambs to the slaughter, really. And then propping themselves up as big honchos to go punish other people for believing the wrong way. And I get so frustrated that I start blurting out <laughs> all this stuff. The reason that I had laid on you, the Lazarus, the, the entrance to Jerusalem of Jesus would never have been that big in terms of the amount of people who were drawn had it not been for raising Lazarus from the dead, had it not been for performing miracles such as, you know, all the ones that Jesus performed. I'm here to say that all of you can raise the dead and probably will be expected to in the sight of men. I don't know which ones will be chosen to do that, but there's also the feeding of the masses. There's the... um, walking through the fire of war unscathed praying protection of the lambs and, and uh, of God because they're meek you know they're they don't, don't have street smarts they don't have the where they're not going to fight the government there isn't going to be a big victory <clears throat> like the American Revolution there is they're just simple people who understand something like a simple day's work for a simple day's pay that's about as far as it goes who care about their families and when they sin, they feel bad and they repent and they pray together and they try to fellowship together and and, uh, sing songs that praise the Lord. And, you you know, for them to be called the enemy is beyond the pale. And they help the poor and the needy, even giving the shirt off their back at times. And they're considered evil by Rahm Emanuel and and probably governors everywhere and, and... and, uh, and government everywhere. And it's, it's, to me, it's just unbelievable. 
But what the issue is, is in the Bible it says, these people will be destroyed. So therefore that makes these meek people the enemy. Because they know the word and they resent the idea that they have a belief in a God, Yahweh, who will destroy the Babylon system in the end. <clears throat> and if Obamacare is in Babylon, then what is? <clears throat> so therefore, they're the enemy because Yahweh is going to look out for them. So we're going to fight them and get rid of them so that as to bloody Yahweh's nose because he's the enemy. God is the enemy. So we're going to get God's people because we hate God so much and I don't care if they're innocent or not. They're going down. And they've been waging this war. You know, it's been held back and then they make progress. It's held back to the point where I believe the next thing you'll see, well, not I believe, but the next thing you will see, and you're already seeing it, will be the complete banning of the Bible. And banning of... Um, but you'll see the promotion of the Quran in Islam, which then goes against gays. But that's okay because, see, they're going to get the real enemy. Chick fil A is not allowed in Chicago because it made an anti gay statement. What was that? I believe in, in the Bible's view of marriage. That's anti gay, you're out of here. Rahm Emanuel has cursed Chicago. The murder rate's going to 500 and then to 1,000, and then it's going to be martial law, you know, curfew forever. And that's exactly where he's going to run it because he is playing a different game. It's all about him. He cares nothing for the people. The same thing with the narcissist in chief. It's all about him. He could care less about the people. He just needs the support of those he's giving goodies out to make sure they vote to keep him in so he can finish the job. France, Germany, Europe in general, and the rest of the world will follow suit in bringing forth this new world order. First by using Islam as henchmen, and then of course they have to get rid of them too eventually after World War III. Uh, a world war context would end all elections, would end all freedom, would end all, um, you know, people would be hunkered down and, um, you know, in my view, they would be rounded up for their beliefs. In other words, like a grand pre-crime scheme, they would be rounded up for their beliefs. Just as Jews were in Nazi Germany. I know. If you, look, if you care about the earth, or you care about decency, if you care about people, your blood's boiling right now just thinking about what I'm saying. Further to that, I'm saying that, you know, the people of the Lord, seriously, whose weapon is prayer and compassion toward others, agape love, will become more pure in that and even more peaceful, like Richard Wormbrand when he was put in prison. It will be, you know, it will be such a, a burden that they would have to imprison and put to death people who would pray blessings upon the perpetrators while they're doing it. And this builds up a spiritual power that is so great and a and a collective guilt that is so strong that they start becoming insane with their double speak. They start blatantly saying lies back and forth and contradicting themselves and stumbling because they are so tweaked by this experience that they cannot, they cannot handle it anymore. Many opting to commit suicide because they can't handle the idea that they're doing that kind of evil to innocent people. They mean the people no harm, the Christian. But see, Yahweh is going to one day, one day, 
he is going to um, turn the tables on the world system, which is considered evil, because it has propped itself up on the blood of the saints and the prophets. And the Lord doesn't forget that, and that's a crime that, you know, eventually has to be paid for. They resent the idea that there's a God at all that would, so they want to deny that there is any God, and if anyone doesn't go along with that, in the end, will be a threat. It really doesn't take a genius to see that this is that Yahweh will be at the center of it all, that the word of God will be at the center, that Jesus, Yeshua, is at the center of it all. And as it says, in that time there will be many conversions, and these are called tribulation saints. I don't know, untold, maybe even billions. Because the gospel will, will start to spread again via the persecution uh, to all the reaches of the earth. And the, the, the more that happens, the more angry the global state will become until it's just seething with anger. The idea that somebody who may have been controlled by a government black ops situation could shoot up a theater will eventually becomes the state just going in and gunning down a a mass of people they don't like. Case in point, Hassan in, uh, um, was it Captain Hassan or whatever, I, I don't know. But the idea that he uh, is given a pass and coddled after shooting so many people at Fort Hood in Texas. And um, <laughs> someone with a Bible goes to jail. I mean, it's it's amazing watching it. This will also be a faith builder because when this kind of persecution occurs, people's faith will be strengthened. When you see from, from doing nothing wrong and in fact being a good person and, and living by the rules and doing the right thing, that one is punished for it, this will spread the gospel like nothing else. Just as it did at the time of the Roman Empire. Because people have a sense of when they see someone being hurt for something they didn't do, there's something irrational. It causes them to deeply, to deeply go, in, go within into the spirit and to seek answers to these horrific questions of why would you know, people pick on people that meant no harm and let people go who are like criminals uh, and they would be given a pass and people that are peaceful and loving, why would they be hurt? And it would cause many to bow their knees to the Lord because at the same time there will be the supernatural goings on upon the earth. In other words, the miracle just the same level as the rising of the dead of Lazarus. Now you have Elijah, you know, uh, stopping the rain. Bringing forth, you know, you have the two witnesses bringing forth, you know, a, a kind of a precursor of fire and brimstone to anyone who would try to harm them. Which would vex the people to the, to the point where they would almost be livid with anger that, you know, that these people have some supernatural thing. Any evidence of Yahweh at all would bring forth total hatred of those who are holding on to the world system and Babylon as their God and themselves as narcissists all with themselves as gods. The useful idiots will be, you know, thrown under the bus as soon as they get their way. Now, talk has been about holding back this new world order where you have an elite at the top and everybody else is poor and expected to do uh, obedience to the state which some of the, the expectation would be abominations under the Lord. For example, if you take the chip you will not be in the Lamb's Book of Life. It would 
that would be it. But then there may be a choice that you take it. If you want that loaf of bread for your children, you better take it. So you see, there's going to be some big decisions for people. Do you stand on principle and a convenient way to, to, to be able to get through another day and feed your family? Or do you, you know, you know, you know take the chip or take, take the mark and, you know, bow your knee in order to survive? And wouldn't Yahweh be cruel if you were just doing something to survive? You know, and then getting punished for that, well, then the hell with Yahweh. And that will be the vibe, you see. The, that whole argument comes back, just like in the days of Jesus, it comes back. You know, Jesus, save yourself. You know, give us information. Tell us you're not the king of the Jews. Repent, Jesus. Tell them you're not the king of the Jews. Tell them that, you know, uh, you were just, um, you know, a heretic and that you repent and you're going back to the temple and you're going to, um, you know, apologize to the, uh, the rabbis and the priests and all the rest and uh, tell them all it was a big mistake. I think that's the spirit of what Pilate and before that Caiaphas, the high priest, I think that's really what they wanted. They didn't want a guy to stay the course and to keep on with his own destruction. They said, don't you want to go easy on yourself? You know, we don't have to do this to you. Just apologize. You know, tell them that, you know, the, the authority under, under, you know, the Lord God Elohim Hashem is really, you know, the high priests or the authority and not you. And tell them that you were mistaken and we'll stop all this. Well, you know, it, all, it doesn't have to be like this. You don't have to be scourged. You don't have to have all these uh, stripes and whippings and beatings. You don't have to be treated. Let's just say you're not the king of the Jews and renounce it all. Just say you were mistaken and everything will be fine. So the idea here and the ethos of Christianity itself is that at some point people will be killed for their faith. For no good reason, and even though they've been upright citizens and done no harm to anyone and would never do harm to anyone, even if harm was done to them, they would forgive because that's the way that Jesus teaches us. And despite that fact, still guilty, even though they've done nothing wrong. And that is a huge point in all this. This is kind of like the driver of the, of the justice of the Lord God. And it may seem completely unfair, and to those who don't have a strong faith, they will eventually give in to the state because they believe they will be turned against the Lord and seeing him as being unfair for punishing, say, a father's kids and wife and, be, be, you know, so he would, I'm with you guys, you know, and I'll help turn in the, those traitors out there that won't change their belief system. And yes, they deserve death because obviously the, you know, their, um, their orientation or the book of Revelation and, or the Bible itself is so evil and they won't renounce it. And I'll show you who they are having their studies and I'll turn them in myself. I could even see, you know, fan fantasizing here a little bit. I could even see like checkpoints set up, interstate checkpoints, which it looks like uh, Homeland Security, which is kind of the Gestapo thing, has moved into train and bus stations. So the interstate thing would be, you know, the logical next step. After XYZ event, after something, whatever, some pretext to, to get it in. And they would be combing the state, you know, interstate traffic for those evil Christians. And the 
charge will be, you people are disconnected from the world and therefore a threat, so we must detain. And the correct answer to that is, no, the real world, you know, God is in control of the world, not you, and um, so you would just be putting an innocent, you know, an innocent person to death or incarceration for doing nothing wrong other than, you know, it's against your policy and totally unfair while letting the criminals and all the other evil people get away with murder. Um, therefore, it would be the most backwards thing you've ever seen and everyone would get it. And as I said, the gospel would be spread to the tribulation saints then to where you would have multitudes accepting Christ but there would have to be signs and wonders as well from Yahweh through people, through events that would also tend to flock them together to, to mass repentance. Um, in the end, it will look to anyone with a, any kind of clear thinking, rational mind, it will look to anyone that the global state is unfair and evil and that the people that are being harassed are innocent. And people have a sense of justice, they hate to see that. And most people hate to see that. The, one of the ironies is you have the head of Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano, reading from the book of Isaiah during the Jared Loeffner shooting in the aftermath of that with a funeral and then grandstanding by the uh, narcissist president. Uh, the self-worshipping El Presidente. And this idea of reading scripture, you know, is kind of, I guess, would be on the same level as the corrupt churches, you know, wrapping themselves in, in, in scripture and things when it's convenient, when, when the cameras are on, when it suits them, so that a great confusion would take place. Well, if they really hate the Bible, why would they read scripture? If they really want to round up people who believe in God's word, why would they speak God's word at the funeral? Well, <laughs> that kind of double speak is the way that uh, many have predicted it would uh, come about. At the end of the day, you know, connection to Yahweh, which to me, Yahweh is the world, and the world today is disconnected. because they're disconnected from the source of all life, the living God. They use the buddy system between themselves and their rituals and whatnot to exact power over one another. And, and, and again, it's based on doing harm to something over here to boost one thing over there. It's this very twisted thing that, that requires that morality be left at the door. They will probably also try to legislate immorality as morality where people just by their faith would be considered anathema. And they would be considered anathema because of the fact that their minds are not right. When someone says, you know, like I was talking to someone the other day and they said, well, you know, this guy, the shooter in Aurora, Colorado, who's disconnected from the world and you know, I did this thing because he was disconnected from the world, so to speak. Um, and to that, of course, I don't believe that's true. I believe he was very connected and um, elite, in fact. But there's this uh, understanding out there that people that are not connected to the world, meaning are not participating in the hierarchy of you know, not having normal, a normal, I guess what they want now is a kind of a, a global citizen kind of ethos where, um, you know, the, the gay thing would be at the top of the list, let's say, of the people that people should listen to. And I'm, I'm not exactly sure how it, it goes, but something like people that are not connected to the world would be a danger. So pre-crime, you know, they could do something like this shooter who was obviously disconnected. So therefore, all people disconnected. And when you say connected, what do you mean? 
I mean a spiritual connection to the God of forces and to the earth and to the world system that exists. A spiritual or emotional and, and I'm sorry, a spiritual and emotional connection that I recognize you, you recognize me, we're part of the same, you know, thing. Um, you know, I believe the same way that, you know, the, 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 the pop culture is kind of an indic indication. I believe in all the tenets of pop culture, and I'm, so therefore I'm connected, I'm down, you know. Yeah, that Christians are evil. And somebody, was it Sarah Palin? who said on Twitter um, she was going to go to Chick-fil-A. This is hilarious. I mean, this is, seriously, if you didn't just put me onto this planet for me to observe this, and you told me about it, like, say we're out there on Mars or somewhere else, I wouldn't believe it. But she said she's going to Chick-fil-A, and then it's getting death threats. <laughs> and so they like to kill her. This is what I mean. They want to kill uh, Palin for going to Chick-fil-A, considering her a threat, and even trying to blame her for the Jared Loftner shooting in Tucson because she had put a target on certain areas and key states of elections. Therefore, she caused the killing. It's completely unfair, but it's because she's connected to the Lord obviously. Say what you will about her. She's not... Um, if she was part of the world or connected to the world, you think, well, she drives around in a bus, she's got nice houses, she's got money from her exploits and TV and Fox News. So she, she's really a, a worlder, isn't she? Not necessarily. You can't look at... Um, just look at income. I mean, Jesus said, really, the poor will be with you always, but the, but the context of that is but I will not always be with you. And all this had to do with buying expensive oil for, 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 for Mary to anoint Jesus' feet with this oil that was very expensive and that the poor people shouldn't be, you know, couldn't afford. And yet, and his justification is, yes, the poor will be with you always, but I will not always be with you. This oil is appointed to me from my death or something to that effect which means you know this is something that must be no matter how expensive the oil is it's got nothing to do with poverty or anything it has to do with the fact that I will not always be with you the poor will be and it had to do with the justification of the oil used on to anoint Jesus feet with with Mary's hair and it, this was a very expensive, I forget what it was called, but it was a very expensive uh, anointing oil. And the people were surprised that that expensive of oil was being used on Jesus. And that's the context to where he said, the poor will be with you always. It was in the context where I will not always be with you. He also said, it's nearly impossible for a rich man to get to heaven. But he also witnessed, you know, about things and, and told things to Nicodemus and others. In fact, there are many wealthy people involved in Jesus' ministry. So I think what he's really saying there is the people who sow to the world system for money um, have, would have a very hard time being that they're with the world and being that they've benefited and, and, and waxed rich from their connections to the world. Uh, versus those who are not connected, which for them to acquire wealth would be very difficult if they didn't have all those connections in place. It's kind of like an axiom, you know. It's, it's really, um, say in Hollywood, if you want to make it in Hollywood, it's really the connections that you have would be the only way that you could actually make it. Take the band Metallica. It was the connections that the drummer had that made it possible for them to get a recording contract. Without that connection there, there would be no ability. 
And I think the way that the uh, globalists look at it is, you know, why wouldn't anyone, everyone want to be connected to the world and then we could all work together to make it a really nice place. And, you know, the, the, we, but we need all hearts and minds together on this to help bring it about. And that the people that are resisting, it's just through their foolish pride, of course, because um, there is no such thing as God, uh, they're bucking up the works and preventing us from having our pudding and our, and our futures, so therefore they're the enemy, period. And it, 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 it's always the group in power that would you know, set those kind of rules. The problem you have is that the people in power now have corrupted all the institutions of the earth and become antichrist in their doings and have killed the innocent like they have from the beginning. And therefore, uh, but still the same thing exists, you must join us or we will get rid of you because we need everybody on the same page. And let me explain this to you very carefully. If everyone was on the same page and interconnected, there would be no earth and there'd be no people. Now, the only way you get that is through a leap of faith, obviously. But that's what was shown to me. There would be no reason for the sustenance of the earth given that kind of situation. So my understanding of it at this point is very clear. I believe that the Lord will reveal himself as the answer to humankind's problems and be rejected. But it will be very, very clear that there has been a grace period, that the, 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 the gospel has gone out, that there's been hope and peace and all those things given to people. And that in their rejection of it sets in motion the, um, you know, the punishment to come. And just the notion of speaking about a punishment would in and of itself, or saying even I believe in the Bible, that will become, and already has become, but it will be, like I say, through the color of law, that will become a crime. The belief in the Koran will not become a crime. The belief in the Lotus Sutra of the Buddhist will not become a crime. The belief in the uh, Rig Veda and the Vedas of India and Hinduism will not become a crime. Belief in white magic, black magic, Wicca, this, that, Western mysticism, whatever, occult, spiritualism will not become a crime. The other thing that's kind of a sad reality is they say war is here to stay. Without war, the nations of the earth would not exist because there needs to be a certain level of bloodletting in order to justify the boost of that, of nations. To the extent that those nations go over to that dark side, uh, they are marked to be dealt with in the future. Because nothing happens right away, they think, oh, Yahweh doesn't exist. There is nothing to worry about from the sky. So business as usual. Anyone who is not down with the program will not be a professor, will not be a politician, will not be a rock star will not be a successful entrepreneur, will not be any of those things because we're going to lock it up. We'll use Chick-fil-A as an example. So it may be interesting to watch what happens to Chick-fil-A in this process. Are they going to sell out to the world and say, you know what, you're right, we're going to put a big welcome sign to all gay people and say that we... Um, we don't believe in, uh, the, the, you know, the, though the owner believes in the Bible, the corporation is secular and has no belief in the Bible. 
In fact, this guy, the owner, is retiring. You know, forced out by the board of directors. I'm just, you know, I'm uh, just looking at it going, probably that's what we'll see. He'll walk back the statement that I believe in traditional marriage or I believe in the Bible. Uh, and then the Christians who are kind of along for the ride may, may think, well, that's okay. And then they would be part and parcel of the selling out. Right now, that's not the case. And I hope it doesn't become the case. But could it become the case? Yes, it could. The CEO could be driven out by the board of directors and the new ethos, the new, the new face of Chick-fil-A is that um, th there's, a, there's now a gay CEO who's a Muslim. <laughs> so it's cool. And the Christians would reject it and it would be the, the new... They would be the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the feeding force or the, the, they'd be the restaurant du jour, the chosen restaurant to lead the gay pride parade. So the whole gay thing is being used politically, ab absconded, uh, for a political battering ram that has nothing to do with um, sexuality of people or what they do or don't do. I've always said it was dangerous to label yourself instead of as a human being. Because I, I believe that people could have sex any which way. I, I think in that, case, in that sense, anyone could be potentially gay or bi or transgender or whatever, that it, it's really no big deal. It's, you know, if one wants to do that, then, then they're, they're free to do it. So what gives here? Why is there this political battering ram through hate laws, through civil right, rights legislation, to get at this people that mean no harm to anyone. I, I mean, it's, it's incredible. Uh, it's supernatural. It, it, it gives me a whole new loss of respect for a lot of people. And then they will tell me privately, as they do, yes, but I have to make a living. You know, so I can't go to Chick-fil-A or I'd be out of a job. Oh, well. Rahm Emanuel will welcome with open arms the new Chick-fil-A that is um, now being run by a gay Muslim and, uh, and Chick-fil-A will expand around the world. <laughs> Absurd, I know, but I'm making a point. I'm making a point. Have we gotten to the place where people will sell out for money, even just a pittance? We'll give up all the, in other words, when I say sell out, meaning the word, let's define what we mean. We mean giving up one's principles and integrity in order to exact some sort of trinket, payment, favor, um, no, or to, to eliminate harassment or any other thing like that. To renounce any affiliation with the Bible or Jesus or any of it. And, and the numbers are bearing this out. The amount of Bible-believing people, say, in America has gone down by, I think, by half. At least by 30%. So the program and the pressure is being successful to eradicate the Bible and eradicate Yahweh. Now, as far as Allah and all that, no problem. You can even be a mass murderer with Allah and still be treated favorably. And it's funny, so many of the people behind a lot of this legislation are liberal Jews. 
liberal meaning they have given up the Torah, obviously, and they're, 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 they say they're Jews but are not because they don't believe in, in uh, the scriptures. And then they would be the ones who are embracing Islam all the more, which vows to send Israel into the sea and kill all Jews and all gay people, by the way. But that's just fine with them. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. If you sat down and told me this, if we were on another planet and we were just about to come to Earth, like the bus is coming to Earth, and you say, well, before you get there, I want to brief you on what's going on there. And this was the briefing. I wouldn't believe it, would you? I wouldn't, I'd say, that's not possible. That is not possible at all in any way, shape, or form. People just can't be that stupid. The answer is, it's not that they're stupid. It's that they want things and they're going to be provided things should they uh, give up these stupid beliefs. And should they join the hypocrisy? And they will gladly join the hypocrisy for a few freebies. And I think that's really where it kind of, that's where the whole food stamp president thing comes in is we got to give more people more people freebies so that they will abrogate their principles and of course in the end they too will be lambs to the slaughter they just don't know it now we're talking about corruption and a nation divided here and a house divided worldwide a house divided cannot stand. If you divide the people into the takers and the providers, and the takers outnumber the providers, mob rule uh, ensues, and this program that I've said that sounds unbelievable will continue even though it makes no logical sense whatsoever, is total hypocrisy and evil, and it will be done under the color of law and be perfectly log logical to the reprobates who take the trinkets and become therefore reprobates because they must become what? Double-minded, that's the definition of double-minded. In other words, well, what I do and what I say are two different things, but that's okay because I'm in concert with the world system, totally connected with the way things are going. I'm on the right side of, they love to say this, I'm on the right side of history. Back when Egypt went down, I said, yep, Muslim Brotherhood will take over. Oh, that was not a prophetic statement. That was just based on pure logic. And lo and behold, my prediction came true 100%. And that Obama would give money to the Muslim Brotherhood who has vowed to run Israel into the sea and to kill all the Jews. And many Jews that are liberal are behind funding the Muslim Brotherhood and feel that Israel is evil to begin with. And there's no end to it. Once you've gotten to that point, say as a Jew, I would think, you know, I don't think there's much grace left. I mean, at that point, you're a secular Jew, I guess, and you've decided that uh, there is no God, but you have culture of being Jewish. And that will mean that you will fund the enemies of Israel, and you will fund the enemies of Christians, <clears throat> and you will fund the enemies of, of, of uh, Torah-believing Jews without guilt and feel like you are doing the right thing. Bible will say these are people that say they're Jews but are not because they're of the synagogue of Satan meaning that they have left the Torah they have backed the enemies of Yahweh they have turned against their religion but they keep the cultural aspect as a way of I, I, you, know, you know if you told me this about Jews I wouldn't believe it but I read it of course in the Bible if you told me this about Christians, 
that many of them would sell out to become members of a church, I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. If you told me that most politicians would give up morals in order to um, remain as senators and congressmen, I wouldn't believe it. If you told me that the president of the United States is a pathological liar and speaks blasphemies against the money, you know, I, I would have a hard time believing it. I'd say, don't the people see? Yes, but they're going to look the other way. Well, why? Because they're getting food stamps. They're getting unemployment benefits. They're getting goodies. So therefore, they're going to keep their mouths shut. And anyone that threatens that, they will vote to get rid of, even if it means going against their own principles of being, you know, a Christian or a Jew or whatever thing it is, you know, a patriot, a, uh, um, a truth teller, those would all go out the window in order for them to uh, take the piece of the pie they believe is rightfully theirs. And is being offered to them on a silver platter. If it continues like this, you have no nation. I think that's the goal. And you would have no nations upon the earth because it would all fall. And uh, it would have to be some sort of enforced military dictatorship globally that would uh, be the sheriff in town to make sure that everyone is double-minded or, um, or they're put down. Ultimately, that will be, if you have a problem with hybrids and machines, I'm just jumping ahead to the logical end. And if you don't take your orders from machines, because humans are dirt and disgusting, Humans are not allowed to walk around at Yellowstone or on public parks. We don't want that pollution, contamination. Hybrids will tell you what to do. If you don't bow down to a hybrid, to a robot, and take your orders hence from that, you will be an anathema. And it goes even further. There could be an inanimate object that you were to take your orders from. If you don't worship the inanimate object, you would be a threat. And it goes further. If you're not for the eradication of humanity, you are a threat. And then it goes even further. And they're all caught up in it. And no one can seem to see where it all heads. It's all done under logic. Yes, we want to help the middle class. Uh, there, there is no middle class anymore. Um, this is just sloganism and, you know, whatever. That, 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 that sounds good as a soundbite. But there is no help for the middle class. All they want from the, what used to be the middle class would be the vote. And then after that, they're done with them. They don't need it anymore because, you know, the whole idea of this election would be to end you know, this process, you can certainly see the end of the relevancy of any election. And so they're working for the elimination of elections. These are people that tout themselves as compassionate and loving. Sarah Palin says she's going to go to Chick-fil-A and the very self-same people are offering death threats to her for going to Chick-fil-A and eating a chicken sandwich because the guy believes as Sarah Palin believes, in um, the Bible's view of marriage, which is hate speech. If you told me this, I wouldn't believe it. You woke me up from a deep sleep, I was in a sleep chamber for 20 years, and you told me this is, and you gave me a briefing on what's been happening, I would not believe it. If I was Tom Hanks and Castaway, uh, um, on that island with Wilson, you know, and I finally came back to civilization. You briefed me and you told me, um, you know, this is what's happening. I just wouldn't believe it. If you told me that all these uh, good people 
are going right along and they want people put to death for going to Chick-fil-A, I wouldn't believe it. I would say, how much further can it go? And I'm, and I'm here to tell you, well, it can go a lot further than that. Because it can go to the agreed upon free will choice to eliminate humanity from, from, the, from the cosmos as something evil that should have never been started in the first place. Through, yes, through the mechanism of science and hybridization to uh, eliminate humanity by eliminating the original human genome. And that if you're for the original human genome, you would be considered conservative, which would then be considered evil by the new state or the new state of the world. That those connected to the world would have to be double-minded hypocrites and humanity hating in order to then be with the program and adults with careers and good people of the world. I don't hear these bands that were touting all this utopian idealism of being, you know, connected to this thing. I don't hear those songs anymore. I guess they, they lost interest in their zeal to evangelize the new, the new way. What does a person do? What is a person expected to do in the midst of this? Well, the only way you're gonna keep your wits about you is, you know, it's gonna be the word of God. It's gonna be the, uh, you know, um, singing songs and praying. Pray that Yahweh keeps you in good stead and keeps you intact as a single whole, single-minded, filled with the Holy Spirit human being that will keep you on the track of being of a sound mind while the godless rest of society seeks to make laws against God, I guess, ultimately. Well, you know, it's not that they're evil. It's, you know, they may not be doing anything wrong, but just that belief system is a threat, so we need to eliminate that from the earth so that we can have a peaceful world. And it will all be done, like I said, under the color of law, peace and security, freedom and mobility, and human rights for all. And of course, they don't need to change the Declaration of Independence. They need to just seem to, all they need to do is render it moot. In other words, it's no longer applying because there are no borders. Da 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 da. And believe it or not, folks, this is the utopian dream of the secular world. To have a victory means we have a world of people that all think the same way, all living in peace and harmony. Um, based on the eradication of certain groups of people who threaten that. In the end, everyone is a threat to that because they're humans. You can see where it goes from there. And that is why I will put the word out there and that is why most of the preaching about all this is to keep people intact and to help them to survive. Surviving means to have their souls and their minds intact by being cleansed by the blood of Christ and the supernatural uplifting of Yahweh, of uplifting his people into a greater love that then um, becomes eternal through his grace, mercy, and power. And to me, that may be a leap of faith. The world doesn't believe that there is anyone like that that's going to take care of his own. 
and any belief, any such belief by, say, children, at some point will be considered illegal, and there would be a context or pretext to take children away, and already is, you know, here and there. And not, I mean, it's not a complete policy yet because, as they say behind the scenes, well, people aren't ready for that yet, but we'll incrementally do these things. And gun confiscation and things like that, um, bank accounts, pension funds, whatever, all of that is, you know, kind of in the works. A debt crisis comes up, and the state is bankrupt, and now everyone is forced by law to give everything they have to the state because we need to survive. It's that kind of thing and those kinds of events that lead very quickly to the end result of human suffering, which is what the gospel and Jesus and the whole point of the Lord coming to the earth and intervening through his word was to eradicate that kind of suffering and to protect the people from themselves, showing them that the human heart being what it is will do all those things I just said that seem unbelievable. And the answer to it is, the fall of man. They don't believe in the fall of man. They believe that man is good with some help and training. He could be good. But that will also involve the eradication of the original genome. Hence, I believe you will see hybrids, not too long from now probably, who will be given rights superior to humans. And if that's not enough, there's probably dimensions and realms to this uh, of the supernatural uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the occultic side that uh, provide hip, you know, a certain kind of hypnosis and a certain kind of feel-good buzz, if you will, to doing all this evil. And the entire system then of the new world would be based on the killing not just of one group over here or over there but the destruction of all genomes weather modification um, genetic modification, behavior modification, and all these things will lead to the result that non-human entities will rule and the eradication of, you know, and then the really hardcore ones believe that all matter is evil and, and that if they could somehow get rid of material, you know, planets and you know, whatever would be uh, would be better, and hence they'll bring in you know like through weather weather modification, droughts, and whatever they can create given the science the level of science they have. The re-terraforming of the Earth for the uh, alien just means to me the terraforming of the Earth and the destruction of the climate and the and the and the um, entire systems of the of the Earth for the purpose of the rise of inanimate machines. And that's the logical extension of where it goes. And I'm not the only one who's imagined it because, you know, James Cameron did a movie about, you know, The Terminator, which was exactly about that very thing, you know, from a different perspective. But I mean, uh, that very thing. You know, if you're logical in your thinking, it's not hard to make those leaps to that point. Sci-fi used to have cautionary tales like Soylent Green, where in the end people were eating humans. That's what Soylent Green was. They were being forced into cannibals, but not told they were cannibals. Which is satanic, obviously. So I think the whole thing makes sense. So that is why I think the good fight would be to resist that sort of thing. 
but who can discern it? Who who is caught up in it? I mean, when I see the tweets on Twitter. And by the way, the people that are say would give death threats to Sarah Palin, they will not get a knock on the door from, uh, say, law enforcement. I don't think. Because with the Trayvon Martin thing, there were all kinds of death threats and you know just you know stuff that should get people locked up. Didn't happen. But somebody tweeting um, something about the Bible, uh, like if you made a prediction about, say, the president or something, and you said this is a prophetic dream or something, bump, 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 knock on the door. It could be a tweet, give it in love, you know, a warning to the people, knock on the door. If there is absolute, I'm going to kill you, la, 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 la. Nothing happened. You can see, so the stage is kind of set through that. Um, Sarah Palin has had death threats made to not just her, but her family. It doesn't seem that anyone is doing anything about it. They are allowed to um, say those things that would get any, you know, any Bible-believing person in, in trouble, arrested, whatever. I mean, it should get anyone arrested. You know, if you make threats to a person, you know, that, that would indicate bodily harm and or, or, or murdering them, there should be uh, an intervention via law enforcement if they're, you know, monitoring all this uh, to make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> because it's, it's illegal. It's wrong. It's wrong to threaten people in that way out of anger. We're not allowed to just go threaten people out of anger. Never have been allowed to do that. That's what laws are for, to protect people. But in this case, it's okay. Again, I wouldn't believe it. I did also make the prediction that you would see Homeland Security and, and people didn't believe me at the time, I guess. No, some people didn't. Uh, some did. I made the prediction that uh, once the Homeland Security got going with the airport, it wouldn't be long before you had bus stations, train stations, and inter interstate uh, travel. Uh, and department stores and theaters and, you know, just everywhere, right? Um, Guess it turned out that I was right. So I believe that the rest of what I'm saying, predictively, would also be correct. When I was in high school, briefly, what was cool was rebellion toward God. I mean, the things that made a person a cool guy would be um, the abrogation of any kind of morals and principles, total rebellion uh, toward God, hedonism, do what thou wilt, and embracing the satanic way. And those were the people that were cool, were the ones who embraced the satanic way. And that was even called um, emerging into adulthood at some point that adulthood means uh, seeing the way things are and embracing it. Seeing that you're outnumbered and you can't win, kind of swing into it, baby, get with the program. All you have to do is you know, have an agreement that, yeah, I mean, even churches, like I say, are fronts, and in the background, you've got the satanic stuff going on, and, and that's watched to make sure that, uh, you know, churches really became, well, for example, the church in America, a praying church in America, with so many people that used to be members, now, no, people have left the churches, but some of them have left because it's corrupt, but what I'm saying is, praying churches would be one of the greatest forces to hold this kind of thing back. So therefore, the church in America has failed in its basic duty to teach people the word of God 
and to line them up with it and to pray for our leaders and for our, our direction of our nation to be a good direction. Well, the people have, obviously from the news and from the state of things, uh, fa- the, the church, in other words, has failed because instead of getting a blessing from the Lord, it looks like a curse has come instead. It just really doesn't take a, much of a leap, you know, mentally to see how provision from the state would be then dependent on taking a chip, you know, to make sure that everyone is not committing fraud against the system. It, that is kind of almost like a no-brainer. A chip, a thing, a mark, a, you know, to identify you. People would scoff and laugh at what the Bible says, and that uh, people would be forced to take a mark in order to, um, you know, to exist. And now we see that that is not only logical, but it's already in the works. You know, something like that. You know, it just needs some kind of a context or pretext, event, whatever. You know, a state of war would do it. Um, say World War Three, whatever, any kind of thing like that to identify people so that we know they're not terrorists. And, you know, it was a great sin. I think when David allowed the people to be numbered, he really got in trouble for that. I mean, that was like a really big no-no. But all those things the Bible warns about are happening. And there is no blessing. which in my mind makes me believe, and then then the worse things get, the more excited they get because it means more power for them, the controllers of the whole thing. So it's just kind of like, you know, it's, it's it's a horrible situation. I don't see any solution collectively. I see a solution individually where people keep themselves intact and, you know, you're on your own to teach your children and, you know, teach them morals and right from wrong and, and, uh, teach them the word of, of God and, you know, show how people uh, made mistakes and how God dealt with them, you know, and, and, and show how the thing works. But today it's like that kind of thing is that the, the world is completely hostile toward it. You're doing a great evil if you teach your kids morals. Because, you see, that might help them to resist embracing the corruption that they must embrace. And, you know, corruption meaning double-mindedness, um, yes is no, no is yes, you know, that kind of double speak, to become a part of that, which would be the abrogation of their principles in order to survive. Or it will be put to people like that. So the question then becomes, you know, how does it work out? And the answer is, I mean, I know people that are in business, okay? And they're, and they're intact and good people. And they're scared to death. They, 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 they don't know what to do. They don't know, they can't take a risk right now and create jobs or whatever because the environment is hostile toward the normal creation of businesses, ventures, jobs, etc. It seems that the the regulations are such that it would punish anyone, especially with the health care rules, for setting up a business or taking a chance to invest in something, to get something going, because it seems at this point that even that kind of thinking of, of being an independent businessman, an independent entrepreneur, is, um, is, is punished. At the same time, we have Obama saying, he loves entrepreneurs, and that's what makes America great. And yet, what he's saying and the policies that he's, that he's signing are two completely different things. For example, if you got rid of certain corporate taxes, you would have an inflow of capital into the country, of capital that's, off, that's outside the country, to the tune of some trillions of dollars. Well, that would help tremendously, but 
it's being it, it can't they can't move that money and put people to work because of the punishing tax laws. And I think, you know, in all fairness, Romney represents, you know, kind of a traditional capitalist, free market, sovereign nation, you know, approach, you know, traditional America. But there are so many people that I see that hate that, that they may even outnumber the ones who want an America where people can come and work and, you know, the American dream, if you will. And the people at the top just don't give a damn about people at all. I, I, you know, if they could just eliminate all the ones that, are, that, that, that aren't thinking the right way and they can have just people that, that uh, they can control, um, if they could just push a button and magically have that be, I, I think they'd do it no matter how much suffering that would involve. You also then have the people with the, you know, with the power to make that happen, the police, the military, whatnot, who are being interviewed and, and you know, they're being uh, trained basically for, you know, under the guise of domestic terror, eradication thereof, um, which doesn't take a genius to figure out that that really eventually what it means to the elites that control these forces is it means, you know, the eradication of the wrong kind of thinking. Prophetic literature, 1984, um, you know, Brave New World, um, you know, sci-fi like The Terminator, all these kind of things, uh, and all the futuristic tales of, uh, of uh, genetic manipulation and, um, you know, eventually the control of the birthing of making babies and whatnot taken away from the individual in the future all those kind of crazy tales that people have told that had a certain resonance now kind of come into view. And none of that could happen if people had morals, if people had common sense, if people had, you know, uh, spiritual teaching. If, if, you know, I'll get mine, and if it hurts you, I'm going to take it anyway. appealing to the base nature of people through fear, through the carrot and the stick method, you know. You fear the go, the, having a horrible life and this and that, you'll take the carrot and you'll be okay. Just forget about, uh, you know, culture, morals, the declaration of it. Forget about all that stuff. Now it's basically survival mode. You make the best deal you can. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. And, uh, like, you know, I guess as the prostitute we could all become, do whatever uh, they tell you. I find that to be incredible. And this is not a left or right issue. This is really a, what I'm talking about today. It's, you know, I, I, you know, I have my doubts about, you know, the, uh, Romney too. You know, I don't, I don't, I just see a different philosophy there, but at the same time, I don't know, you know, who is able to stand against this force of uh, corruption. I don't know that politics is really the, the, the answer to solving the, the issues that we have before us. I'm not sure that the people that are running the show these days want a solution. The teaching today seems to be there is no God, it's all about evolution, it's all random, it's up to us to create peace and security and, you know, through our politics that are basically about um, the will of the state versus the will of the individual. It seems that that is a, a recipe, as it has been in the past, for tyranny. There are shows these days that are saying it's all over by now. I mean, I think you have like the Alex Joneses of the world and, 
you know, you have certain Christian prophecy sites, you know, that have been producing mass hysteria and fear for years now, and people just run with it, you know. And in a way, they have helped to bring all this about. I know they didn't intend that. That's why there's no point for me to talk about the symptoms of it all, like World War III or, you know, the rounding up of some, some people that believe this or that or, the, you know, whatever it is. Um, there's no point for me to talk about that stuff. Will that happen? Well, you know, what do you think? There's no point to obsess on that because that's a symptom, not the disease. The disease is spiritual. But the Bible is hate speech, so that's out. It's going to have to be some new age, kind of newfangled ecumenical thing that brings in all religions in a single faith that will be the elixir for the people. And that will involve the promoting of false prophets, you know, in the form of sorcerers who will have the ability to make people feel good if they embrace this sort of kumbaya thing of compassion with the uh, turning the back on the idea of atrocities done to innocent people in order to bring that about. Jesus said it best. A corrupt tree will bring forth corrupt fruit. There's just nothing you can do about that. People that turn away from God would be corrupt. That, that's really the corruption. I mean, I guess when we talk about corruption, that's what we're talking about. If you see the world as an evil place, are suspicious of it, right there you need, you need mental training to see that it's a wonderful place. <laughs> I'm reminded of the, my trip last year to Disney World. Oh, man. You know, the thing that was so funny about it was at the edges, things were, you know, people working there weren't so robotic as they were back in the 60s. You know, they, um, in the 70s, they, um, you know, it's kind of, you know, the edges are kind of roughed up. I mean, you know, they don't clean the mess up right away like they used to. They don't, uh, you know, you might find some of them smoking in the back and cussing, you know, dressed up in their Disneyland uniforms. <laughs> but the idea that there's this rote thing of these workers in this sort of utopian society called Disney World, where everything is magical and beautiful, was kind of like a microcosm of how they thought this new world order would be. You know, um, it was so weird. I remember we had the RV and we went, uh, we stayed in an RV park there in the, the Disney World. And we had to get food and stuff, you know. So we, we went to a market there at Disney World. And when we went in, there were no employees. And there were lines and lines of certain kinds of foods, but they were illogical. Almost like it was a movie set someone set up. And then eventually people appeared to, to help us, you know, check out. There were no people at the checkout counters, none. And there'd be things like you'd have a row of styrofoam containers for ice. You know, and you'd have no cleaning supplies. You'd have sort of out-of-date deli products. You'd have like an area where there was wine and beer and stuff, but it would be kind of like dusty bottles and, and have another area where there were beach towels and another area where there was, uh, you know, it, it, it looked on the outside like a regular supermarket, but the products that they had in there were very limited, just a few products, but multiplied endlessly down their aisles. So you go into a, a frozen aisle and there wouldn't be like all kinds of vegetables like you get at Albertsons or something in the frozen section or ice cream or whatever. There would be just ice cream in one section and then empty and then empty fridge the rest of the way. 
I found that to be weird. But I thought those kinds of shortages of products could only come about from that top-down hierarchy. And I envision that, so the supermarket of the future will have some things, but it won't have all the things that people need because it will be state-run. Because this market was state-run, meaning it was run by the state of Disney World, which is called World because it's a microcosm of the world. When you stay there at the RV park, there are certain paths you can walk on and on, then they have a, a campfire sing-along with actors who come in to act like they're, they're not musicians like on a gig, they're actors who can sing, who put on a whole outfit and a whole, you know, sort of, it, it almost looks like they're robots. And all the kids are singing along. What I noticed from Disney World, which is kind of encouraging, though, is I noticed that, you know, there was trash around, you know, it used to be pristine. There was, you know, bathrooms that weren't clean. There was, you know, there was a, the employees were not happy, like, you know, those plastic smiles they have and they greet you, like little robots, those were all gone. There was this malaise and a common kind of ennui of the repetitive, repetitive, repetitive thing. There were rides people went on, but there was like, you know, people's outfits, they used to have like, they had, you know, they wear a certain kind of shirt and pants and some, you know, where they have an outfit, a uniform. Some of those uniforms of, you know, kids, they're wearing their pants low and others had kind of like dirty t-shirts and others, you know, it wasn't quite, it was almost like a crumbling version you know, there are rides that were old that needed refurbishing that were closed. Um, the people, like I said, the people there, instead of having smiles for the tourists, they were just tired and they irritable and they just didn't want to deal with it. Somebody told me, I had my vape stick with me. They told me, you can't, sm you can't have that here. And they, they were following me around telling me, to, and I put it in my pocket. I said, no problem. Like I committed some sort of crime. And uh, it went on like that. And finally, about halfway through our visit there, we couldn't take it anymore. And we just got out of there, went back to the RV and said, eh, you know, to heck with the Magic Kingdom. I guess it's not magical. And it's, it was kind of the off season. So, you know, probably that's why there weren't, I, I don't know. But uh, when you want to go on rides, there were no lines really at the rides. I noticed that they had the Pirates of the Caribbean and they had a, a place called the Tortuga Lounge where you get a hamburger and a Coke or whatever. But, and I, I told you this before, but again, it's, it's emblematic of a top-down kind of state-run thing. You go to another uh, a restaurant in another theme park like Adventureland and then you had like, say, Futureland. You go into a futuristic looking facade and the same exact burger in the same wrapper and the same Coke and, or, or milkshake or whatever was exactly identical to the one at their Tortuga place, which was the Pirates of the Caribbean theme. And every single place you go had the exact same burger, identical. Even the guy that was out there with you know, with his little vendor thing, like he was a vendor, you know, like an independent entrepreneur vendor, he had the same burger that he would offer you. <laughs> the same wrapper. The same Coke. And <laughs> uh, it really made us all so, the vibe there was so terrible, we just had to flee. And, and, and we had no fun. It was, it was like we were you know, it was like, for us, it was like work. We were being regimented into these various lines and we could walk here and not there and do this and not, you know, we were just like having to conform to this uh, culture of being a tourist at Disney World where we were being um, slowly, not assimilated, but slowly, you know, if we wanted to have a good time, we would have to give up our own thoughts 
and go with the ethos, thought patterns given to us by the stimuli around us of Disney World. Oh yeah, when they greet you, they make sure you have a reservation and they have the same outfit on there when you drive in with the RV. And then you have to take a boat over to the thing and there's a certain boat that goes to a certain place that's designed to, to coincide with your where you are in the RV park or whatever. So you have to take a certain boat and not this other boat. And um, Truly, it's a microcosm of the world. You scratch the veneer a little bit, and all of a sudden, all the junk can be seen. The people are irritable. They don't have the smiles. The burgers are lousy. Everything is rote. There is no incentive to create a good meal. It's all kind of like junk food. The show is old. The people are tired of putting it on. Employees are not happy. Um, they put on their plastic smile until they see no one's looking. But I caught them being normal. The acts that are there to put on music and a show for people, they all wanted to be somebody. So they're pissed off about that, that they're having to be doing this stupid gig at Disney World. The whole thing is a facade, and once you... I got bit there by mosquitoes and I had to go get some, uh, some kind of something to, from the infirmary. And the people were basically laughing that I had mosquito bites. <laughs> you know, it, it can't make this stuff up. And my daughter, who was you know, just turning 21 at the time, she felt the exact same way, and she only, was only 20 years old. You know, she was basically, um, you know, saw through it all and hated it and thought, this is ridiculous and wanted out of there. Oh, yes. Well, there's the hierarchy of RVs, too. If you have a diesel pusher, you're allowed to go in this nicer park over here. But if you have, like, like we have a gas uh, motor, you have to go over here. And if you have a trailer, you have to go over there. So to make sure that the, the diesel buses are hooked up together, the gas RVs are hooked up together, and the trailers, like if you have a fifth wheel, you go over here. But if you have a regular travel trailer, you go over there. So that all the hierarchy is in place about the diesel buses, number one, the, um, the, the, the gas uh, 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 RVs are uh, second-class citizens. The, um, the fifth wheel, the big travel trailers that are, have painted sides are part of another club, but then a regular travel trailer is simply a second-class citizen to the fifth wheel that's painted on the side. And they, uh, they observe that hierarchy when they put people in their slots. So they don't mix... <laughs> <laughs> so they're not mixing people because the diesel people don't want to talk to the gas people. And, the, and in other words, it's people's fault. All this is... And we observe that because we're, we're not really into all that stuff. We're just traveling around the RV. To me, the RV we have is fine, you know. But there's a, uh, a hierarchy about it. And... Uh, later I found out that the diesel people don't want to commingle with the gas people. And so, not just that park, but other parks, we noticed, had the same policy of grouping the diesels together and grouping the gas over in another substandard area. And the diesel people, with their, you know, have their kind of attitude. And I'm like, you know what, I'd rather be a gas person and just kind of be like a second-class citizen. You know what I mean? No pressure, right? <laughs> just kind of wandering around invisible. <laughs> and if you want to be visible, you have to have a, a $500,000 ga- diesel coach with, uh, you know, um, and, and the latest, greatest mod cons, and 
you know, you have washers and dryers and who knows, maybe they even have whirlpools or jacuzzis, but they have to have, uh, their air conditioners have to be hidden like in a bus. And then those get the most preferential treatment. And I'm like, okay, well, they, obviously they're better because they spend a lot more money on their coach. So, you know, they deserve the good spot. So you see the corruption, you know, it's humanity. I'm using these kind of weird examples, but as it goes with the RVs and with the Disney World and with the, the whole thing, it, it, it eventually, you know, manifests out to the rest of the world, a microcosm. And being in an RV gives you a particular microcosm into the hierarchy of RVs, which I had never discussed with you, but they're, you know, those of you who've been out there RVing, you realize there's a hierarchy of RVs. <laughs> you know, and, and it even goes to, you spend the same money, but you're not going to get as good a side as someone's got a, more of an investment. You know, they're, they're more prominent. And so long as we have these kinds of attitudes of exclusion, really, and, you know, the worst... The worst people of that that I saw was like Hollywood parties, you know, rap parties for films and, and uh, where they put the, the grips and the, the people that do the work to make the film happen, they're allowed to go over here. Then there's like a special room that's for the principals and the actors and, you know, they keep them separated. Which, of course, makes the, the grunts who are making it happen and doing all the work and pulling the cables and, you know, carrying the, 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 the putting, setting up the, the crafts and services and, and uh, you know, the different crafts and the craft services people and the makeup people and the, you know, the electricians and the, um, you know, the, the people that set up the, uh, the, the, the track for the moving camera and whatnot. All these people are, who without whom you couldn't make the movie, would be relegated to, say, the, where the pool tables are in the bar, given that they run at a restaurant or whatever, a bar or something. There'd be that special room for the, for the you know, the producers and the friends of the producers and the, the actors. And we can't commingle them. I mean, who knows what would happen then? And most of these people are leftists. And they preach against such hierarchies. Because that's part of their thing, to, to you know, no borders, no hierarchy, no, you know, it all has to be fair. And I'm seeing the most unfair, kind of like monarchy, a uh, uh, dictatorship. So that's where I develop my ideas about, you know, the left wants a dictatorship ultimately, and tyranny. I'm not saying the right, you know, you have people say on the right who want war and this and that, you know. The extremes on both sides, left and right, end up merging in the middle. They want tyranny. Common sense doesn't want that. Oddly enough, the people who are the enemy, the Christians, don't have that sense. They're li likely to, to want to commingle. I don't know how it is with, there are not many Christian movies that ever get done, but if there are, I, I wonder how their rap parties are, if they have this great hierarchy of, you know, the liberal hierarchy where you have um, where they make sure they partition everyone so there's, you know, I wonder if it's the same. I know in the Tea Party, there is no hierarchy because I've, I've been to, you know, I've been to an event and I've seen them and it's like, you know, there is no leader so there's no, you know, it's people just all get together and they want less government and they don't want to be, uh, they want, you know, fiscal responsibility and less taxes and they want, uh, to, to be entrepreneurs and, you know, they want to be able to have the right to take a risk in the marketplace and, you know, make a living for them and their families and get the governments off their back so they, they're not overregulated so that they can succeed. You know, things like that, which are now considered evil uh, by the left. And that's how I sort of developed my anti-communist stance because then I realized that all those people you know, in secretly and now more openly have been promoting communism the whole time. But it's because it's the ultimate hierarchy where they, the elite, will get to really feel elite and everyone else is a slave. And I think 
the, the, the power people in Hollywood, that's what they want. They want a world that's just like Hollywood. You know, Washington, D.C. is very much like that as well. Who's being invited to the parties? You know, this person, and, you know, the, the corral and the social um, corruption as it is. And when you see all this, you go, well, I don't want to be connected to that. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I mean, the, my response is, I want nothing to do with that. I'm not going to participate. I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh, but that's so hateful. You, you, you know, you should at least give it a try. You never know how far you can go. Well, if it's to the point where, you, you know, you're, you're uh, <laughs> you know, you, you don't make a reservation, they give you the best table in the restaurant. If, if, is that the goal? To be able to throw your weight around and, and, and have people uh, bow down? It seems to be. So I rest my case on uh, Jeremiah, um, that the human heart is, is deceitful and wicked and who can know it. Oh, gosh. The solution is keep yourselves intact. You know, abide in the word, study the word, share the gospel. Intervene when people need prayer for, you know, certain things. As the Lord leads, you know, some people, you know, it's not going to be a connection there. But do all things under the Lord and let him guide you because, you know, this is like a, like a minefield in a way. And it's so easy to make the wrong choices and get going down the wrong path that you really need the hedging up of the Lord, of Yahweh, of his word, to stay sane, you know, if nothing else, and to comprehend and understand rather than be, stay sane as opposed to being traumatized and acquiescing. so that you don't succumb to the fear of what they throw at you on TV. And so that you, you, you remain relatively intact. I'm hoping that, you know, people can wake up more and realize that, you know, communism, socialism is just, you know, a road to tyranny and, and, and to eradicate it. And of course, those things are the eradication of religion, meaning also your Bibles and your way, would be eradicated by the self, the same people, and that those people shouldn't be, we shouldn't conform to their way because it would be a, a self destructive to do so, and that they themselves need prayer and need help because they're obviously deceived and deluded, but they happen to be in positions of power where they can do great damage to people's human rights and freedoms in the name of human rights and freedom and utopia and fairness. With that, I rest my case, Your Honor. That's the state of uh, the world. Um, the Bible says we're never going to get to the place of hybridization, though hybrids have been a problem throughout the Bible. You know, all the way back through the Bible, we'd be dealing with these giants and these hybrids, which God wanted eradicated because if they got their way, they, everything would be the hybrid and nothing would be the creation. So that's, so I think, you know, could it be that we have hybrids running the show now? Absolutely. Who knows who they are? <laughs> but we do know one thing, we know what they want. And I will see you next time. Zeph Daniel, God bless you each and every one. Amen.